Hi guys and welcome back to ThinkStudent. Today we're going to be looking at how hard is A-level maths? Many people who are interested in taking maths as an A-level want to know how it compares to its GCSE counterpart and this is exactly what we'll be covering in this video. But first of all, we only recommend taking A-level maths if you've achieved at least a 6 or grade B overall in your GCSE. This is because the maths A-level, especially in the second year, can prove to be quite tasking. You'll need a good capacity to learn and a keen interest in the subject in order to get a strong grade. We're going to be looking at some key points which should hopefully cover any questions you have but if there's anything else please be sure to put your questions in the description below. And number one we have how does the content compare? There are a total of nine topics covered in GCSE maths covering a wide range of mathematics although most of the content here would be what is described as pure maths. For this example we're using the Edexcel exam board but the same trend applies for the other exam boards too. Some of the GCSE maths topics include algebra, geometry, statistics and probability and so although you're looking at many areas, all the work tends to be quite low level and easy to understand. In the maths A level, content is split up into three distinct groups covering different aspects of maths. These are named pure maths, statistics and mechanics. Everything covered in pure maths will be related to basic concepts and structures that underlie mathematics, helping you deepen your understanding of mathematics itself. In statistics, you'll cover topics like probability, hypothesis testing, and statistical sampling. And finally, in mechanics, you'll cover similar aspects to physics, looking at how forces affect objects and laws that have been devised to describe how these forces relate. There are a total of 19 topics covered in A-level maths, about two times as much as the GCSE. The total volume of work covered in the A-level, however, is more than twice as much, as many of the topics are talked about in further detail. And number two, we have how much more difficult is the content? It's obvious that the content covered in A-level maths will be a step up from GCSE, but the majority of the year one course is just continuing on the content that you've already seen. Year two is where you'll start to discover concepts not previously known. But even though some content you cover is simply just building off previous knowledge, it's not to say that the work you'll be doing is just as easy. The main reason for this is because the A-level is far more independent than its GCSE counterpart, requiring far more solo study. Do not fear, as there are plenty of great resources available to help you with this A-level as long as you know where to look, some of which we'll be mentioning later in the video and will be down in the description below. And number three, we have how do the final exams compare? At the end of year 11, you'll sit three GCSE maths exams, two with the use of a calculator and one without. Each paper is worth a total of 80 marks, making your overall score out of 240. At the end of year 13 for your A-level, you'll sit three exams as well, but this time all requiring the use of a calculator. Each of these papers are worth a maximum of 100 marks each, totaling 300 marks overall. A fair warning though, as the mechanics paper, as previously mentioned, covers similar aspects to physics, so much so that 70% of your total A-level maths is entirely physics-based, so make sure to keep that in mind if physics was a topic you struggled with in GCSE. Both your GCSE and A-level exams are graded on what's often referred to as a bell curve. This means that the grade boundaries are not predetermined, but are dependent on the results across the country. For example, if you were to achieve 90% in your exam one year, when the average mark was 50%, compared to a year where you achieved the same percentage, but the average mark was 75%. Because of this, it's very important not to be disheartened when the test didn't quite go your way, as chances are, it didn't work out for many others either. And number four, we have... What equipment do you need? In your GCSE exams, you will have most likely used a Casio FX83GT calculator. However, in the A-level, it's only going to get you through a tiny portion of the course. The reason behind this is the limitations when it comes to both the functions available and the overall processing power. We've made a video and article both covering what calculators we and many teachers across the country recommend and which will be most useful. If you'd like to learn about those in detail, you can check out the link to our article or the video in the description below. But to make a long story short, we recommend purchasing either the Casio FX991EX or the Casio FX CG50. Both of these calculators will get you through your A-level and are approved by various exam boards, meaning that you won't get into any trouble using them. And more often than not, they can actually be necessary to answer some of the questions. And number five, we have what textbooks do you need? To start off with, there are two types of A-level textbooks that you should get if you want much better odds of doing well. These two types of books are called revision guides and classroom textbooks. Revision guides are used for, you guessed it, revision. They don't explain aspects in detail, but are mainly used to reinforce the knowledge that you already know. Textbooks, on the other hand, completely contrast revision guides as they explain concepts in depth. 
Textbooks are perfect if you ever don't quite grasp a topic in class, and especially useful when it comes to the year two part of your course, because many parts of it are hard to understand in the first time around. But it's also very important that you get the correct textbooks and revision guides for the exam boards, as the content can vary in areas. And number six, we have what revision materials are available. There are many amazing materials available to you online, and if you choose to use them, you can get some really high grades. Most exam boards have previous year's papers along with their mark schemes on their websites so that you can practice in real exam conditions. The exam boards also tend to have the examiner's reports which can help you show what areas of maths students struggle most in. There are also many YouTube channels such as Exam Solutions and Khan Academy which provide great content for the whole of the maths syllabus. These YouTube channels don't only provide detailed explanations but also several word concept solutions which I found to be extremely useful when tackling a hard to understand concept. And at number seven, we have what other A-levels pair well with A-level maths. If you're still unsure whether to take A-level maths, it may be helpful to know that it's a facilitating subject, meaning it's most commonly required or preferred by universities to get onto a range of degree courses. This generally means that maths works with a variety of subjects. If science is something you're interested in, math pairs with biology, chemistry, and physics very well. If you're interested in business, pairing business studies with maths and accounting is also a very good combination. Maths also works with another science too, computer science. If you're looking for a career in programming or web development, these two A-levels go great together. That's it for this video guys. If you'd like to check out the article this video was based off of, or any other websites mentioned in the video, you can find it all in the description down below.